Greetings from Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries in Sacramento, California, and our Word Out Outreach. This is Doris Harrell again, uh, happy to be given an opportunity by God to come into your homes and into your lives to bring you the living Word of God, which is able to save your very soul. Uh, don't take it lightly. Uh, have your way, dear Lord, and bless us all. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are continuing on in our sixth series on flea fornication. And so today we're talking about maintaining your sanctification. I just want to give a little uh, recap of what we've already taught about. Uh, uh, the first uh, episode was a warning from God. Flee means run for your life. And then we went to the power of fornication. Fornication is a very powerful sin to get yourself into. It can be a stronghold. And so don't take it lightly when you're thinking about fornicating. The temptation of fornication. Uh, it has many temptations. Uh, and so we taught on that. And then we taught uh, episode four on deliverance from fornication. God will deliver you from fornication. And when he delivers you, don't go back. And so today we will be talking about maintaining your sanctification. And then we will have our last episode next Sunday. And that will be called to holiness. And so maintaining your sanctification. So God already told you in 1 Corinthians 6, 18 to flee fornication. Run for your life. And then in John 8, 36, he said, Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And so there's a way to, even if you get into fornication, there's a way to get out of it. Uh, and, but uh, we went to 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26, and that's where we're going to turn. That's going to be our first scripture. Because it's important for you to know that God can just... Uh, say poof and get you out of it. Uh, he has that power, but that's not usually the way that it happens. And uh, probably because if he just did that, delivers you like that, you'll probably take that life and get right back into it again, just choose somebody else. And so um, what he does is he teaches you how to recover yourself out of sin. And so we're going to 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. And it says, And the servant of the Lord, and that's who I am, the servant of the Lord, must not strive. That means I'm not going to be running around, uh, and none of us ministers and pastors should be, running around looking in your garbage can, looking in your mail, running past your house to see who you're fornicating with. You're going to have to do this thing yourself. You have to want to get out. We can't do this. Amen. So we must not strive. But be gentle unto all men, apt to teach. That's the key. Teach. Patient. We understand it's going to take time. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. So we've already seen that when you get in uh, the sin of fornication, you're just opposing your own self. You got yourself and made yourself one with somebody that um, may not even love you and most likely don't. Because that's what fornicators do. And they may even have demons. Uh, so you oppose yourself. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves. That's you recovering yourself. Out of the snare of the devil. Who are taken captive by him at his will. So these relationships. Once uh, you get out. Uh, understand that. You need to maintain this sanctification. Uh, you don't want to uh, just go and go from, so you get out this bad relationship, because all of them are bad, and some of them are horrendous. And so God makes a way of escape for you. You saw that in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And uh, in getting out of it, you're going to have to cut off the sin, and you're going to have to be wise. You need to get wise counsel. Because leaving these uh, relationships, remember everybody's hearts and feelings and souls is all involved. So you're going to have to um, get counsel to help you come out of that. 
And God will make a way of you to escape. You have to look for that way. Sometimes you just can't go up and, and cut people off like that. Because of the feelings, it can become very dangerous. So, and then also, uh, you may have children. So, these relationships are not easy. They're very complicated. But you've got to cut off that sin if you want to go to heaven. Amen. Because you no know, fornicator is going to make it in there. So, you always pray and then you look for a way of escape. You take that way of escape and then don't sin anymore. You mortify the flesh. Become faithful to God. Learn about Him. You develop a love relationship with God and just stay faithful. Pray. That's a key element. You must pray in the morning. Get up in the morning. God said, acknowledge me in all of your ways and I will direct your steps. So he's talking about in the morning. Give God the glory. Say good morning, Lord, I love you. You know, that's the first commandment. That thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. But we get up and say hi to everybody but God. So check, switch this thing around and love the Lord so he can direct your steps from the beginning of the day. Don't just give the devil in the flesh your whole day and then at the end of the day, get on your knees talking about now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. That's all backwards. Start it. It don't take that much to tell the Lord, good morning, I love you, I thank you, I praise you, I'm acknowledging you. Please direct my steps. You'll have a much better day. Amen? So develop a love relationship with Him. Go to church to learn about Him. You're not going to be able to do this on your own. If you think you can do this on your own, stand at home, then you're in rebellion. I'll teach you a little bit about that in a minute. So read, study, and do what He says. He tells you, he's got, this whole Bible is all about instructions. Just do what he says. And uh, I'm going to take you now to a scripture in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Do this every single day. This is not a one-time thing, which I'm going to take you to. Romans 12. You have to get up every morning and determine in your heart, in your mind, that you are not going to be a fornicator. You're not going to, you got out of that. Uh, you're so grateful to God. And don't mess around and get into another one. I've seen that too many times. Romans 12, 1 and 2. So this scripture in Romans 12, 1 and 2, and, 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 and like I said, God's servant, we don't mind begging you. We're not going to strive with you. We're not going to grab you by the chest and try to make you do nothing. you got to do this yourself. But we might beseech you. We might beg you. Amen. We beg you, therefore, we beseech you, therefore, brethren, Talking about Christian fornicators. By the mercies of God, that you present your what? Bodies. Present your bodies. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's just the thing you're supposed to do. It's your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, trying to fit in with the fornicators of this world. Everybody's doing it. Let everybody do it. But you, you're a child of God. You've come out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Don't be trying to fit in with them, trying to conform to them. You're in the world, but not of it. But be ye transformed or changed. That's what the word transform means. Changed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove, you may prove for yourself what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. And you will prove that fornication is not in the will of God. It's not in His good will, it's His acceptable will, nor is perfect. Amen. Do that every single morning. That's what you do when you get up in, in the morning. You say, Lord, I love you. You're presenting your body to God. A living sacrifice at the beginning of the day. Amen. And uh, get that word. Get you some word in. And uh, worship him. Worship. I'm going to tell you what worship means. Worship just simply means you love him, you adore him. You, it's your adoration for him. And you, the more you uh, tell him you love him, the more he loves on you. And it's a two-way thing. And, and it's wonderful. And you get to the point where you're talking about fornicate. Fornicate. And then you run for your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. So, I want to have you to understand that God's people fail for one of two reasons. 
And there's nothing new under the sun. The, these are the same two reasons that uh, God's people uh, perish for. They're found in Hosea 4 and 6. So we're going to turn to Hosea 4 and 6. It's, it's in one verse. God's people perishing. We're not talking about the folk of the world. Those that uh, say they love the Lord. Called by his name. And fornicating. Hosea 4 and 6. Now here's uh, what you don't want to do. God said, my people, my people are destroyed for number one, lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, that's number two. You've got knowledge, but you reject it. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no more priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. O oh, Lord, have mercy in this world. You want God to not forget your children. So number one is a lack of knowledge. My people perish or destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That means you just don't know. You're deceived. Many people get into fornication by being deceived. Amen. Somebody walks with them and, and tells them that you're so lovely and you the one. They come to your church. They snakes come to the church to uh, get God's women, God's daughters, and God's sons. And they'll tell you you're lovely. Uh, I, I've been looking. Uh, God told me they'll lie. God told me I got a wife here, and that you my wife. And and uh, if you don't know the word of God, and if you're not loving God, you can be deceived. Amen. And you, you let that flesh get a part of you. So lack of knowledge is one of the uh, sins that will keep you from maintaining your sanctification. And that was the woman in the garden, that was her original sin. She really believes a lie. That's what uh, fornication is, or excuse me, deception is. You really believe it. And don't think you can't be deceived. You know, if you don't have knowledge of God, uh, you can be deceived. That's what God said. My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. So you need teaching. Then the other thing is rejection of knowledge. Now rejection of knowledge is a whole other story. And uh, what that means is you have knowledge, but you're just going to do what you want to do anyway because of your lust for flesh. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. No, it's wrong. That was Adam's sin. He knew. See, the woman was deceived, but Adam, according to uh, the Bible, was not deceived in 1 Timothy 2.14. He was not deceived. He just made a really bad choice that he wanted to be with her, with that woman. And so he made uh, a rebellion. Now, here's the, the problem about rebellion. Now, even though Adam knew the consequences and chose to disobey, he didn't know how bad it was going to be. The Bible says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now, let me make this clear to you. When a person is deceived, a deceptive spirit, when they're under a deceptive spirit, they are under witchcraft. When you believe a lie, mess with your mind, and now you're under witchcraft and you're confused. Because anytime you believe a lie, you're confused. Amen? Now, but rebellion, somebody that knows it's wrong, the Bible says it's as the sin of witchcraft. So you're confused too. It's just as bad. You're just as confused as if you're caught up, confused, in means you're out of control. Now you're running from this lover to that lover, this fornication to that fornication. That's what Christians do. Christians, I'm, I'm talking to the brethren and the sisters. Amen. Flee fornication. Cut it off. Uh, go and sin no more. And so Adam made a really bad choice and he had, it had serious consequences. And uh, those consequences are found in Genesis 3, 6 through 14. 6 and 14. I'm going to run there real quick. Genesis 3, 6 and 14. So I'm telling you, uh, fornication has consequences. Real bad ones. So just think about that and that will keep you uh, maintaining your sanctification. Because it, ain't, it doesn't get better, it gets worse. So Genesis 3 and 6 says, 
And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. So she was deceived. She thought this, this eating this was, was going to make her wise, but it didn't. Um, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, with her, and he did eat. Now, God said his eyes was wide open. He was not deceived. It says that in 1 Timothy. So he just wanted to be, just like it says in the scripture, with her. Amen. Now, over here, the consequences of this sin, you can see it in verse 14. Let's see. I want to go to verse um, 17. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened, unto the voice of thy wife. You listen to her and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee and not to me is what he's saying. Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of life. All this cursing that you see around here. All this cursing of the ground. All this heavy labor and all these earthquakes and all these tornadoes and hurricanes and all this fires and all this stuff is because Adam. Amen rebellion. So it has consequences for these sins and uh, and we know some of these consequences is really bad. So God says uh, to maintain your fortification do not make provision for the flesh. Romans 13 and 14 you have to see this scripture. Don't make provisions for the flesh. Now you're out of this uh, you didn't finally got out it takes some time like I said and so now you start a date again. You better be careful about dating. Uh, look back in some of these previous uh, um, episodes and talk to you about dating. And so now you're holding hands with folks. You know, if you are a person that's awakened sexually, holding hands is a dangerous thing. I'm just going to tell you, a little peck. A little peck can go a long way. That's far you put. So don't do that. Amen. Don't do it. I mean, well, that's innocent. Yeah, right. You just keep on. <laughs> You're making provision for the flesh. That's Romans 13 and 14. Romans 13. Excuse me. And verse 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. When he says, if you Can you put fire in your chest and be burned? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the word. He's the word. Can you put it in your chest and be burned? And the answer is, No, you can't do that. Don't even tempt yourself. You know, you're tempting your own self. Amen. He said, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That's how you maintain your sanctification. Don't even play with it, you know. Uh, get you, like I said, in the, I believe it was the last episode, some godly uh, married people to go with you on dates. You sit in your seat, he sit in his seat. You come in your own car, go leave in your own car until you get married. That's when you hold hands and kiss and, and do all that stuff because now you got God's, God's hand on it. So now I want to give you a New Testament example. Uh, let's go, uh, well, let's just use Paul. Uh, Paul was one of them. Well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's go to uh, the woman, Mary Magdalene. And I'm going to go to John 8, 1 through 11. A New Testament example of someone that maintained their sanctification. John 8, 1 through 11. And this woman, <laughs> oh, this woman. The Bible says she had seven devils. Oh, boy. Now, we don't really know how many devils people got today. But I'm going to tell you, people got devils. Just like the people got demons. And uh, when, when, when people are uh, lusty and unclean and stuff, some of them are demons. Some of them is not the flesh. Some of it's devils. We just out there playing around and we hook ourselves with somebody with a devil. Now we, it's just, just a big mess. Now, so let's look at this uh, woman. God bless her. John 8, 1 through 11. Jesus went up into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Do you see that example? He taught them. See, people need to be taught. And the scribes and the Pharisees uh, brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, 
And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now, two things, I, I want to point out two things right here. Adultery fits under fornication. When you speak of fornication, when we speak of fornication, we're talking about all sexual sin, all of it. It all fits up under fornication. Adultery, uh, homosexuality, effeminacy, all of that fits under the same thing. So this one, and so the other thing I want to point out is, and this is just a little off the side, but i got to say it anyway, in the very act. And I just want to ask, where is the man? <laughs> well, we know that women were oppressed back then. and uh, But anyway, that's the only answer I can give. You know, they could get away with it. But how wrong is that? <laughs> Amen. Now, verse 5. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says thou? Testing Jesus. This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stood down with his finger and wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. I mean, who are they to accuse anybody with their sinful selves? So when they continued asking him, they just kept on asking him. They just going to barrage him. He lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Hey, let that sink in. You know, you, uh, you got no sin, you, you can be the first one. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Because there wasn't nobody casting no stones, because they all had sin. And when they heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thy those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. But look what he said. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. That is what Jesus is telling us. He's, see, here, here's what I've seen. I'm telling you what I've seen. And anybody that lives in this world has seen the same thing. People get out of a bad relationship, then they get in another one. And if God ain't in it, it's going to be bad too. Then they get into another one. But you got to stop that. You, if you're going to uh, uh, maintain your sanctification, go and sin no more. And God is able to keep you. I am a witness. He can keep you sexually. So develop a love relationship with God like that woman did. That's how you maintain your sanctification. In fact, that's the only way you're going to maintain it. By the power of God, getting to know Him and knowing how very much He loves you and how very much His power can keep you. And that's through acknowledging Him in the morning, not at night after you went through all this kind of stuff. In the morning, acknowledge Him first thing and He'll direct your steps for that whole day. Amen. And then reading His Word. You know, we man doesn't live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God does man live. We get up, we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, but the, the most important food, feeding our spirits, which is, makes you strong and keeps you from fornicating, which helps you maintain your sanctification, we forsake that. We go to church, eat one time a week. One time a week, maybe. Depends on if you're getting it or not. And then think that, but, 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 but hold back your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> it's fighting time. So be that way about God. i got to get my word in. Whether it's opening up the book, and don't you just love those pages turning. I'm not saying nothing about people's phones. That's all right. But I just love that. Ooh, that feels like that parchment. It's wonderful. But get that word in you, that food. It's, it's life. It's food. And uh, uh, if you're going to work, get a CD. Uh, and stick it in your car, turn on Christian radio, do something. But you got to get the word in you every day. Amen. 
And uh, as far as that woman, uh, we're going to talk about her uh, more next time because that one is called Called to Holiness. And that is a wonderful thing. So maintain your sanctification. Go when God delivers you and sin no more. Amen? Let's just do that. God is so good. Uh, he's wonderful. And we just love Him and praise Him. I want to make a plea here to you to repent from your sin, the sin of fornication. Um, just, just do what God says. You know, you are not going to be able to do this on your own. That sin is too strong. There's demons involved. Just submit yourself to God a living, and offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And he'll do the rest. Do that every morning. I offer my body, say it with your mouth, a living sacrifice. Father, I thank you and I praise you that your word has gone forth out, out, Lord God, and that it will accomplish all that you sent it out to do in Jesus' name. Uh, you know the monthly orders, offers, uh, free fornication, 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 same thing, either one, flee it, all of it. God bless you. Uh, if you want to write to us, you can write to Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries, Post Office Box 293-266, Sacramento, California, 95828. You can send your prayer requests, your letters, your questions, and donations. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. Amen.